I'm Adam Frank. I'm a professor of astrophysics at the University of Rochester. I'm here today to talk about science and conflict. In particular, what I'm interested in is the the underpinnings, the sort of metaphysics of science that sort of seep into everything. Um, in particular, you know, I love science, do it every day, um, but I definitely think there's sort of a problem with the metaphysics in the sense of um, science sort of tells us, and it's really not science, it's what we call scientism, um, that, you know, there's this perfectly objective world and it's out there and, there, you know, uh, we know everything about it or we can know everything about it. Um, and that um, experience, subjective experience, is somehow just an illusion. And uh, I kind of started off as a physicist thinking that, but as time went on, I came to recognize that actually experience is the ground of everything and that we really don't have a theory of experience. And that in fact, you know, many times uh, uh, physicists will think, you know, that when we think about consciousness is that the job is to, um, uh, is to embed experience or consciousness in physics. But what I've really come to realize it's the other way around. Really our job is to figure out how to how does physics fit into this experience that we can't get away from, right? We have every morning it's there uh, and we can't get away from it until we die. And physics is one particular way of approaching the world. It's a kind of behavior and science as a whole is a kind of behavior, but really, you know, the experience comes first and experience is irreducible. So, so the problem uh, for the society is that, you know, science is so powerful in its ability to manipulate the world and, you know, it does great things for us, but also that sort of sense of, of the, the de sacralization of the world, that the world is just dead, it's just dead atoms, infects everything. And in one of many reasons, uh, one of the reasons we're in the mess we're in, especially when it comes to the environment, and climate change is that we sort of treat the living world as if it's just another uh, that it can be monetized. It's just another, it's just a bunch of dead resources that you can do whatever you want with, and you know, just it'll you know dump the stuff and it won't matter. I mean, I think you know the whole point of the Anthropocene is we're recognizing is that you can't really do that. Planets have minds of their own in some sense, biospheres. Uh, you know, so I'm sort of you know taking the as an astronomer the 10,000 light year view, but that we have to rewire the the underpinnings of what we think science is and what it speaks to in order to uh, deal with the conflicts that it in part um, has driven or at least its misuse in some sense has and this actually you want to ask is what is the average lifetime of a civilization right is your if we you know if I could look across the universe and I could look at all the trajectories of all the civilizations across space and time if the average lifetime was like 200 years we're in big trouble Right? But if the average lifetime is two million years, then it means there, we have more, there's more play in the system, right? There's more, you can make mistakes and recover. So what I'll be talking about explicitly is, uh, you know, from the Zen perspective, is, is this great, one of the, my favorite chants is the harmony of the relative and the absolute. Um, you know, and as a physicist, as an astrophysicist, I'm very much all about the absolute, right? You know, the, 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 the you know, cosmology, the cosmic viewpoint. Um, but the relative is where I live, right? And it's sort of finding the balance between how those two fit together. Uh, and so one thing that the absolute gives us is the sense of, you know, this moment we're living in is just one of many, you know, or that, that there's, you know, there's so much, universe is so much vaster than our particular stories. And we need some of that because, you know, climate change more than anything is a long story. Uh, it's been a long story, right? The climate has changed before, though we've had 10,000 years of very stable climate. But, you know, understanding, coming to a new understanding of what climate change means for us. Um, I think we have that story all wrong. Uh, we think that, you know, our job is to save the planet. And, you know, the planet does not need saving. It's, we're the ones who need saving. Uh, so, you know, thinking on 100-year timescales is something I think is really going to be essential for us to navigate what we're heading into.